Let's bring in uh, John Schneider. He is manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. John, as always, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for thank you for joining us today. Before we move on to the Dodgers, I wanted to ask you about yesterday, but from a different mm. perspective because I think there is. I think there's a misconception about how decisions regarding rain delays are made. And just so we're clear, you had nothing to do with it, did you? Like you didn't, you had nothing to do with, oh, we got to play this game because, you know, we need the win. You had nothing to do with that. No, uh, it's it's, uh, MLB and the umpires. You know, obviously uh, with the score being two to one, yeah, we wanted to play. We wanted to play. Um, the last thing you want to do is run guys out there and get them hurt. You know, if, if it's unplayable, it's unplayable. Um, but yeah, we're at the mercy of really the league and, uh, and the umpires at that point. And, he, and even the Royals, they don't have a great say other than providing information about weather and things like that. Correct. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, we were, I mean, myself and Matt and the umpires, you're in touch with MLB. Uh, felt like we had eight or nine forecasts that they were giving us. Um, and we're kind of following protocol. You know, it's a weird thing. And, um, yeah, they were ready to play if the field was deemed playable. So it, it's it's a weird thing. There's a lot of uh, boxes to check as you're going through it. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to uh, tonight's game against the Dodgers. You know, when, whenever a team comes, in, 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 comes into town or whenever a, a team faces another team that has a great hitter on it, a lot of times managers will say, well, the key is to limit the damage that other guys are doing, right? We're just, we're going to, if he's going to hit a home run, it's going to be a solo home run. That might work with some teams. I'm not certain how the hell you limit damage in this lineup. What, what realistically, what is the approach to facing a lineup that runs you know, five or six deep? Yeah, it's, that's a tough lineup, obviously top three, uh, especially, but you know, you try to, I mean, I think, you try to limit damage. You try to pitch to weak contact. These dudes are, they're tough to strike out. You know, they got really good control of the zone um, against really good hitters. I think it's, it's pitching a weak contact. You know, if they're built to hit homers and score a lot of runs, you know, so you gotta, you gotta take your outs and you can get them. You definitely not lose focus of the guys that are hitting below the top three, but you're, you're pitching to weak contact. Um, but yeah, they're tough. They're, they're, they're as tough as they get. Uh, John, Alejandro Kirk is eight for his last 46, a 174 average. What are you seeing with him? Um, yeah, it's been a tough go for Kirky. I think, you know, expanding his own a little bit more than he has in the past for sure. And, um, and not squaring up his pitches, you know, that, that happens with hitters. Um, you know, he's, he's so good behind the plate, um, but we got we got to get him going offensively. Uh, to lengthen out this lineup, you know what I mean? So it, it, I think it's a combination of what makes him good is his control of the zone, and that's not as tight as it has been. And then within that, not squaring up his pitch when he does get it. You think it's mechanical? Because, you know, I, I think you tell me if you, if I'm wrong, but I think when he's going good, he's compact. Everything's close to his body. Hands are, you know, he's like most people, but especially with his body type and what he's trying to do to balls, you know, his hands got to be really close to his body. Just looks like sort of that hand's getting away a little bit earlier, staying there a little bit longer. How do you fix that? Like that's, you got to play, I think, and, and, you know, the more you play, the more bats you get would help. But how do you fix that if you're Alejandro Kerr? Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for him, obviously, or speak for G or, or Donnie. Um, but it's, it's you got to work. You got to work at it. You know, whether that's more reps off of uh, machine and get that feel, that, that game-like feel. Um, but, but you hit the nail on the head. He's good when he's compact, you know, and he can handle the ball in close to him really well. Um, so you got to look for pitches there for one. And, you know, I think what, to me, it always comes down to where you're swinging at. You know, and I think if he's swinging at pitches where he can handle, it's a different story. You know, that, that's, that could be said about anybody, but um, you got to work at it. You know what I mean? And if it ain't working, you got to try something a little different. John, I'm sure you get asked this by, uh, by the reporters on a daily basis, but um, when it comes to the lineup, do you have a time frame or a set number of at-bats or just a general sense on when you get to the point where you say, okay, I've got I've to start doing something different with, with the, the, 
the top four guys or the top three guys? Uh, not a definite number, no. It's not like, okay, we're going to... It's not like 90 this. and we make a change, right? Right. It's not like, okay, 150 bats are here. We're going to do something different. Right. I mean, I think what, you know, you have to just really, you know, you look and you say, okay, well, for one, it's, I don't think it's time to do anything right now. You know, anything drastic. You know, mm-hmm. I think that what you do is you say, okay, what am I doing to, to get ready? And if that's not working, maybe, you know, do we have to try something different to get ready? Um, again, these guys have always hit and we kind of get where they're at. Um, but I don't, I don't think that it's time to do anything drastic. Um, these guys play a lot. I think, you know, off days here and there will definitely help those guys too. And, um, you know, if there does get to a point, there's no magic number where you gotta move some guys around, you do it. Um, and performance definitely matters at this level. So I think it's, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes to, to say, okay, let's see if we can do something different to get ready. And then if the results are still the same, you know, then you start looking about, okay, maybe we need to move some things around. Is it, is it kind of frustrating? Because, look, i got to think you guys, you guys have a better idea than, than any of us what's under the hood, right? I mean, you just do. And is it kind of – do you almost wish it sometimes you could say, guys, this is what we're seeing, right? These are the state secrets. I'm giving you the freaking <laughs> state secrets so you'll stop <laughs> asking me about this. Yeah, I, I mean, exactly. If we were, I mean, not pleased with what was going on, we we would change something. You know what I mean? So it's uh, we do we do see a lot more than the average person, obviously. And you know, I think our job is to try to put guys in the right spots. And you know, there's still a huge amount of trust and confidence in our lineup. Um, so it's it's not like. We, we get, you know, we get frustration from the outside. Sure. You know what I mean? But um, at the end of the day, you just got to go out and you got to, you got to get the big hit. You got to have the good at bat. Um, and, and we know that those guys can do that. So the fact that we are where we are now, and I think not really firing on all cylinders to be, you know, obvious, you know, is, is encouraging. Um, but you need, you need it to start clicking pretty soon. John, do you think Vladdy needs to make a lower half mechanical change? And what I mean by that, you know Vladdy better than anybody because you've been around him longer and you've seen him at his best. And, you know, we always try and go back to 2021 and, you know, we want that crystal ball to where we can just sort of lift him up from 2021 and put him in 2024 and he's just going to be that Vladdy all over again. But the pitchers he's facing are are really, really good. The only question that I would have is, you know, it, it is the era of you got to beat the dude to the spot. They throw so hard that, you know, when he's good, that barrel is out in front of that front leg. It just is. And consistently the last year and a half or so, you know, he just he's been in between for whatever reason. And I, I'm in that camp of sometimes, you know, you don't want to make a change. Sometimes you have to make a change just to. Uh, make it look different and you want to show up every day and have something to build off of. It's not the where you're hearing him say, we're just going to continue to work. Well, I would ask work on what? Like it's, you know, what you're doing is just sort of look to me like it just ain't working consistently to where you're just beating that dude to the spot, right? The hand is going by the face. I got to get the barrel out front. Do you think it's to the point where he needs to make an obvious mechanical change with the lower half that was a long question it was i'm sorry but i had i had to try and explain myself because it is yeah right it's uh we talk about him a lot so i wanted to add a little context to it i mean i talk about under the hood i mean vladdy's made he's made some mechanical changes he worked he worked really hard in the off season to try to to try to clean some things up i don't think his lower body um, I mean, you guys can see it. I think he, when guys are real quick to the plate with the toe tap, he gets, you know, he gets caught in between a little bit, but I don't think, I don't think so. You know, I don't think it's a lower body, uh, mechanical change, you know, with Vladdy and knowing him for as long as I've known him, he keeps it very simple. You know, he wants to feel rhythm with his feet. And when he's great, he knows he catches the ball out front, like exactly like you said. So, um, I think, the work that he put in with his actual swing path is what we're, is what we're focused on right now. Um, and then it, it really, again, it comes, it comes down to, like you said, beating guys to spots. If he's going to be pitched in, you know, it's either, let me beat you, let me beat you in there or, or not offer at it, you know, but Vladdy, I mean, he was, 
he's been hitting this way for his whole life. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't think by any means there's, there's reason for him to change anything mechanically. You know, it's, it's just the constant back and forth with, with pitchers. Um, and again, it's work that people, you know, didn't really, that, that don't see every day or didn't see in the, the entire off season uh, is what we're focused on, what he's focused on. Uh, moving him down in the order wouldn't, wouldn't help. Like, you know, putting him in, say, the five or six hole wouldn't take a little pressure off to where he's just thinking, see ball, hit ball. No, I don't, I don't think so right now. No. Okay. I mean, it's when he's, when he's good, yeah, it's see ball, hit ball. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I, I, you understand that, you know, teams are game planning around the top of our order. You know, it's just, that's how every team does it. So um, it comes down to what you're going to do in response to that, really. So it's, um, I don't really, it doesn't matter where he's hitting. He's going to yeah. be pitched the same way. You know what I mean? He's going to be pitched the same way. So it's uh, when it does click, he's exactly where we want him to be. Okay. Uh, John, a couple of sort of housekeeping questions. What's the next step for Alec Manoa and, uh, uh, sorry, Alex Manoa, and, and ha- have you guys uh, heard anything further on Ricky Tiedemann? Yeah, Alex is actually here. He's going to throw his side up here um, and then do another start um, in Buffalo on uh, Tuesday, I believe. And um, and with Rick, it's um, it's kind of more the same. He's you know, there's no new imaging plan. There's no uh, no second opinions plan or anything mm-hmm. like that. It's, um, you know, kind of just resting right now and hoping to hoping to ramp back up pretty soon. John, how do you want you want to use Barger? How do we want to use him? Yeah. Like uh, every day yeah, gets I mean, righties, that kind of thing. You okay playing him in left a little bit more. How do you want to use him? Yeah. I mean, I think getting him in against righties for sure. And, and hopefully utilizing some of his, his power, you know, his ability to drive, drive runs in. Um, totally understand left field is, is new form. You know, we, we knew that when we called him up, you know, that was, that was part of it. And um, he'll play other spots too, I think. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's unique that we have guys that, you know, are, are, good infielders that you don't want to flip in the outfield. You know what I mean? So um, I know the first ball that went to him was a little tough and then he made, he made a nice play against the ball and, and made the other routine plays. So confident enough that he's athletic enough to be, to be fine out there, but we're looking for him to, you know, impact the baseball, um, especially against right-handed pitching. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest, where's he made the biggest stride since last year? So actually since last spring training, because he was, he actually he was kind of an intriguing guy last spring as well. What, what, what strides has he made? Yeah, I think he's, he's kind of learned how to hit a little bit. You know, you look at the swing and it's, it's a, it's a big swing. And I think that he, he wants to do damage. Um, he wants to hit home runs. I think last year kind of taught him how to control his own a little bit better. And that's, that's kind of where he got to this spring. Um, and, you know, understanding he doesn't have to sell out for power, you know, it's gonna, mm-hmm. it's gonna come because he's a strong guy. So I think going through what he went through last year, you know, he was hurt obviously a little bit, but I think understanding how to control his own and still be able to, to hit the ball hard has gotten him to where he was in spring training and obviously what he was doing in Buffalo to start the year. John, I talked to Bo at the field, and Bo was telling me in some counts he's getting a little frisky. Like, he wants to get the head out and do some damage to the pull side. You know, uh, do you like when he says that? I don't know if you've heard that or not, but that's sort of what he said to me. And, you know, when you watch him in certain counts, 2-1, 2-0, like those counts that he can – really sort of zone in, look in a certain window that he can get the foot down a little center. Are you seeing that? Would you like him to try and do that? Is he, you know, he's six for his last 28, which is not really a big deal. It's this early in the season, but when a lot of guys are not hitting, do you like what you see from him so far? Yeah, I mean, I, Bo's at his best when he's taking good aggressive swings. And I think just when he's getting pitches that he can really handle, that's when he's elite, you know what I mean? So, Hit. I think it's him understanding how he's being pitched a little bit, you know, as, as he gets older. And I think being around, you know, being around JT a little bit and talking hitting, you know, there's going to be times where guys are going to come in because you can handle, you know, inside outing a ball to right field. And, and yeah, you can take a shot. But I don't – I yeah, I want, I want Bo to be up there to hit the ball hard. And I want him to get, you know, his good aggressive swings off uh, before two strikes and then use his two-strike approach, really. So I, I don't – I don't know about steering it per se, pull side, um, but I think we've seen Bo long enough when he is um, taking really good aggressive swings on pitches in the zone. That's when he's obviously at his best. Absolutely, John. We're going to let you run as always. We appreciate your time. Uh, go get him tonight. Yeah, Thank good you luck, for this. Buddy. Good luck Thanks for that.
You bet. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. See you later. Take care. It's John Schneider, manager of the Blue Jays. 707 will be the first pitch tonight mm-hmm. against the Dodgers.